why am I so afraid to F up? The plight of the perfectionist. Um, yeah, so many people struggle with this, being afraid to make mistakes in our personal lives, in our jobs, careers, with strangers even, people we don't even know. We want to bring our best to the table. And it's interesting how that belief system that a lot of us have holds us back <laughs> from a lot of the things that we want to do or um, holds us back from establishing the connections we want to have because it doesn't look a certain way right it's not perfect it's not the best it's not at its optimal you know level and so we discard it like it doesn't count it doesn't matter and we do that like like we have that train of thought for so many things in our lives you know and I can only attest to my journey, but I know a lot of people share sort of a similar upbringing, right? Especially if you had a environment that encouraged perfectionism, right? And if you had people around you that would freak out if you made a mistake, um, freak out if you did something wrong, something bad, right? So we overly identify what we do with these things with being good or bad and it really can sabotage us later in life right we can like these same beliefs can turn against us and you know stop us from from going after the things that we really want and that's really where we have to take inventory and re reprogram right recondition and say you know what this belief doesn't serve me in the way that I um, interpreted it right and allowed it to run my life and I've had to have this talk with myself many times and work on a lot of those things Posting regularly on YouTube is one of them, right? Um, and I'm sure a lot of other content creators can relate, right? You want to put your best thing out there. You want it to be perfect. Um, I just had a scenario with uh, a job that I'm working now and I had a call with a client and I'm a little shaky on the calls, you guys know. <laughs> Um, kind of trying to find my rhythm and you know I had to submit one of the recordings and I was really just afraid to have other people in the company hear my call because in my mind I can already see where I messed up what I need to work on and you know being feeling so exposed right that my flaws are being exposed and my mistakes will be seen and heard and I actually just told a friend the other day it's so funny how we desire to be seen and heard but we also fear it at the same time and how that paradox is it can really sabotage us right if if we're not aware of it sometimes we're not aware of it and we do it sort of subconsciously through like our actions um, we know what we want we say what we want but everything that we're doing is contradicting that um, and that could be a part of it you know is those fears can come up and when you're aware of it it's like okay this is what's happening um, and so what I've been telling myself internally is soothing myself right it's like going back to inner child stuff if as a child i was not given the time and space and um you know the 
the gentleness, right, to make mistakes and to be okay with it and to find value in the mistakes, right? Because that's where you're able to see, okay, I can work on this, I can strengthen this skill or that skill. Um, and it just kind of have it be a positive part of the process. Then you, you know, how you view it can serve you as opposed to making you like, okay, mm, that's not for me, or I think I'm gonna quit, or I think I'm gonna take a long break, <laughs> a year or two <laughs> to collect myself from that failure. And it's not, I'm not trying to say it in a judgmental way because we all process failures or perceived failures in different ways and if you know take whatever time you need to kind of regroup and regain your balance right but you know speaking for me I know that that is something that has been a challenge for me and so you know now is is just sort of that time for me to, to face it again but in a new way in a more open and honest way in a way that isn't you know shaming myself for it um i was having a talk with someone else about just kind of being a late bloomer which i talked about in i think the first video that i posted here outside of the interviews that i used to do of other people and i was starting to just have my own um, kind of chats on here um, and listening to myself you know a lot of people can't watch themselves or listen to uh, themselves and you know that's hard for me too because I will be overly critical or just kind of notice the ways in which I am a late bloomer in a lot of the things that I ended up discovering about myself and about the world and about life. And you know, that's okay. My, my process was my process. And maybe it's not so much about being a late bloomer as it is you're an on-time bloomer, right? When you learn what you learn, that's the time you need to, you needed to learn it. And, um, your story is valuable still because there are so many other people in that position um, and even still it's it's not there doesn't have to be so much pressure on it right um, one of the other things I've been telling myself is just keep it light keep it light release the pressure release the heaviness around the idea of making a mistake or failing at this or this not being perfect or coming out exactly how I envisioned it or, you know, noticing what still needs to be worked on or what, it, all of these things, this is just a part of the process. So it's like, how can we, how can I and we, whoever else can relate uh, just bring more enjoyment and fun um, and grace to the process uh, and that's for everything that's for every aspect in our lives like notice if you bring grace and fun and ease into maybe your mental health uh, journey but maybe you don't do it when it comes to work right or when it comes to family uh, dynamics or you and your children or you know like you know, maybe you you do it when it comes to your body but you don't do it when it comes to uh, your mind you know like it's just kind of scanning your life um, and seeing where am I on autopilot in, a, in applying a certain belief system right that isn't actually working for me but that I'm just doing it because it's what I've always done it's what I was taught to do um, and, may, and maybe it is serving you maybe it is helpful to you 
but a lot of times people don't kind of take you know that inventory to ask themselves like is this actually benefiting me and is this actually getting me closer to where I want to be and how I want to be and how I want to show up in my life in this world yeah so um yeah so I, I that's 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 basically what I want to talk about today and a lot of it for me is communication a lot of it for me is acceptance um, <laughs> it's funny because you know you don't want to bring everything back to childhood but a lot of it are habits that stuck with you or that stick with you and they can be very very minute and subtle and you don't even realize it for example I grew up in a culture and household that frowned upon you looking at an adult in the eyes right it's like especially if you, if the if it's a you're being scolded or something it's like don't look at me in the eye you kind of had to like bow your head that is a very the that whole act right is very diminishing of your self confidence right of your self esteem that you may not be directly saying the words or teaching your child uh, to be that submissive person in their life but that's definitely the implication that's definitely the thing that they're going to learn just through the act of that and then what those you know what that can do to you psychologically um, and I, re I realized that I spent, um, like years ago, I realized this, that I spent a lot of time not looking people in the eyes, <laughs> um, looking everywhere else, but not, you know, being focused and engaged, right? And, you know, that's not just that, there's other things, right? But it's just interesting. It's interesting to see how even some of those subtle things, um, can play a big part in how you do life so yeah I hope that that helps someone today and maybe helps give a different perspective on um, being easier on yourself when it comes to not making mistakes right or 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 being perfect being doing everything the right way you know there isn't a right way to do everything there's your way there's the way you choose there's the way that you're that feels like you right um, there's ways that you might be curious about and explore and then maybe decide okay I did that you know I want to try a different way that's not for me like it's it's life to me is explorative and it's okay to give yourself room to explore thus room to grow and I want to I understand that conceptually and from an um, emotional and spiritual standpoint but my work is that I want to apply that more in my sort of day-to-day -day physical practical um, experiences and encounters I want to tap into the ways that I'm not aware um, of it affecting me negatively and then to put more energy into into shifting that so hopefully that makes sense and I will see you guys in another video.